Hello and welcome to Easy Projects. And today it will be a chip chat video about the 4511 BCD to 7 segment decoder chip. And all this chip can do is to take a given binary number that's between 0 and 9 in decimal and convert that into a signal that can drive a 7 segment display. So let's try to take a look at the features of this chip and why we would use it. And here is the data sheet for the device. And this will tell us the operating voltages, the current sourcing capability, the pin assignments of the chip, and it will show us where the segments are located on the 7 segment display. So we connect the correct pin from the chip to the correct pin of the display. And we can see we have four digital inputs and seven outputs. The chip has got the capability to light up all the pins, playing all the pins, or it can latch the output. And these are all active low, meaning that if you don't want it, you have to pull it high. So if you don't want it to light up all the outputs, that should be high. If you don't want it to blank, that should be high. And if you don't want it to update the outputs, that should also be high, but I guess you would. <laughs> so most of the time you would keep this one low. And they kindly supplied us with a function table that shows all the combination of the pins. So one disadvantage with this chip is once you go above 9, it will just blank the displays. It could have been nice if it could do like A, C, E, F and so on. There's other chips that can do that, but unfortunately this one can't. And let's take an example here. If you want to set a zero on the display, of course you have to have zero in binary as well, or all lows. And it will set all the display pin highs except for the G. And if we take a look at this, that's the middle one. And that's correct because that's the only one you don't want if you want to display a zero. And now let's take a look at what we can use this chip for. Well, here is one example that if you have a microcontroller and you simply don't have the 7 pins you need to drive the display, you can send the signal into the decoder and that will drive the display for you. And this also gives another huge advantage. For example, if we have a PIC microcontroller, you could just say port A equals 2. The microcontroller will set a 2 on the output in binary, of course. That's exactly the input that this one needs. And it will set a 2 on the display down here, that you can't see. We could, of course, write some code for the microcontroller that would take this 2 and translate it into the signal that it needs to send to the displays. Which pins to set high and which to set low. But that is actually quite a bit of code, and uh, if we're running a huge program on here, it could actually slow things down a little bit. And that is also the reason that some microcontrollers come with a built-in driver. But you can be forced to use a chip like this as well. Say if you use the ICL7135 analog to a digital converter here, they are often used as voltmeters or ammeters. Then you'll get the data output as a 4-bit binary coded decimal. And kind of the only way to get these shown on 7 segment displays would be to use a chip like this. But that's not the only problem with that because these outputs are also multiplexed so it will send out all 4.5 digits on these 4 pins and will alternate between the 5. And it will tell you which one by enabling one of these D outputs as well. So in that way you can demultiplex it. And you can actually do that just with one of these and some transistors. But I will make another video about that. But you can of course also use these without any digital circuitry. Say if you have a CMOS counter chip or something, you can put the output of that one to the input of this one and that could show the result on a display. 
So, here I have built up what must be the most simple circuit that we can build with this chip. The chip is connected to 5 volts, and these outputs I have simply connected to the display via 390 ohm resistors. And this will give us 7 milliamps for each segment. The lamp test and blank input I have connected to 5 volts, and the latch enable I have connected to ground. Each of the four digital inputs I have connected to a button, and I have also connected a pull down resistor to each of the digital inputs so that it will be held to ground unless a button is pressed. On the other side of the switch, I've connected 5 volts, so if we press a button, it will send 5 volts through the switch and into that input. So, as you saw, by pressing the least significant digit, that would be a 1 in binary and a 1 in decimal, and it will give us a 1 on the display. And of course, to display a 2 in binary, we'll press this button, a 3 will be the first two switches, and we can make a 4 and an 8 just by pressing 1. We can make a 9, but if we try to make a 10, it will just blink. It could have been nice if it would put an A instead, but it can't. And here I have just replaced the buttons with a simple microcontroller. And I have just set it to skip through the numbers 0 through to 9. So if we take a look at the code here, this first part on the top is not important, that is just the configuration bits. This is just setting all of the pins to outputs setting the state to low and making sure that the pins are in a digital state. And we enter a loop that lasts forever. We have a one second delay and we will increment the port C by one. It will just keep doing that until port C is greater than nine and it will reset to zero. So as you can see that is very simple and you can just Instead of incrementing this by 1, you can have somewhere in your code, you can just set port C to whatever you like. Or you can choose the individual pins that you are using. So for example, there's 6 pins on port C and you could set it to ignore the last two so you can use that for something else. So if we didn't use the 4511 decoder chip, we would have to do the decoding in the microcontroller. And we could do that with a series of if statements or a switch statement or something like that. But it will take up at least nine lines of code instead of just this one command that we have up here. So I hope this video was useful in some way. The 4511 chip might not be the most exciting chip of all, but I chose that one because I used it in my previous video and I didn't tell anything about it there. And in a future video I will talk about the multiplexing that I used in this circuit as well. So if you liked it please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. See ya!